I've been passionate about keeping different types of fish and later it turned out to be a lucrative business. And this business about fish keeping started only as a hobby. Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. Today's video allow me to inspire you about the business of raising this tropical fish. Well, I know that if you are a hobbyist, you are so much concerned about the health of the fish. And this is one of the very important things to consider when you are raising livestock, the health of the fish. So I would like to share with you how to maintain the health of the fish. And these tips that I'm going to reveal to you is really very important for us to be able to understand that the lives of these animals depend upon the kind of attention and the kind of knowledge that we have for them. The first tip that I am going to share with you is the condition of the water. Since we're talking about fish, well, allow me to say that the condition of the water is the paramount consideration in all kinds of fish. So how to maintain the condition of the water? Of course, we have to consider your location because the location will also have a great impact on the health of the fish. When I'm talking about location, I'm referring to the place where they're gonna receive the sunlight. This is very important. And maybe the next question, do we need to expose them to sunlight all throughout the day? My answer is no, because too much exposure also to the sunlight will become also detrimental to their health. So we have to balance, and this place is actually exposed to sunlight, but they are only exposed during noon time and this place is no longer exposed especially during early in the morning and uh, late in the afternoon so they will receive sunlight only during the noon time and maybe another question that you will ask Dexter how important it is to expose our fish to sunlight the exposure to sunlight is really very important in order for us to have a warmer temperature because this warmer temperature will help the fish digest their food if they are being fed with too much of this food and the water condition is very cold, then there is a tendency that they will die and they will be gasping for breath because their metabolism will not work well in a very cold temperature. So if you are in a country where you experience winter, I've been told by my friend that during winter, they give minimal food to the fish. They will not feed the fish as many as they are feeding during summertime. So this is the tip that we have to consider. And also, we have to make sure that we know about the behaviors of our fish. Well, if you are seeing a koi, a Japanese koi, early in the morning that is gasping for breath and staying in one corner, then that's an indication that the water condition inside the tank is already bad. So if you will spot your Japanese koi, for instance, that they are gasping for breath, staying in one corner, grouping in one corner, then that's the time that you have drained half of your water and then replace it with new one. And also, if you will see that your koi have really difficulty on breathing, refrain, please, refrain from giving food to them because they will surely die instantly. And I intentionally did not change the water for us to have a clearer picture about what is happening right here. So guys, in this tank, you will see that my Japanese koi's are really gasping for breath. And I intentionally did not change the water for me to be able to have good emphasis about what I am talking about. So this condition is really bad. And if I will not change this one, maybe all of them will die in the next couple of days because of the bad water condition. Maybe you will ask Dexter how to remedy the situation. Well, it's just very easy, you know. You will just drain half of the water and replace it with new water. And maybe you will ask, what about draining all the water? Surely they will also die because that water condition is totally now different from the old water conditions that they are used to. We only have to gradually do it. Maybe we can reduce 25% in the morning and another 25% in the afternoon to complete the 50% water change. And please don't neglect this kind of situation. This is really 
a signal that we have to change immediately half of the water and we will do it gradually. Now guys, allow me to just say something about the breeding of our goldfish and our Japanese koi. I've been so encouraged because we already have the mud pan and we have to produce plenty of this fish in order for us also to make a good harvest and sell this at the pet store. I will tell you, this is really a lucrative business. And this business is even comparable to other businesses like raising goats, raising ducks, and raising chickens. So let me tell you something about how to maintain the health of our goldfish right there. So come on, let's proceed to this area. So guys, we have here the very cheap tank for goldfish. And this is just made of wood. This is a cocoa lumber. And we use an ordinary tarp for us to store the water. And you will see that we have here one, two, three, four, five, six separate boxes for our for our breeder goldfish and I would like to give you a tip on how to take care of our breeder goldfish you will see that this tank is the tank of the red cups and these red cups are all breeders and they are in good shape and they are in good condition and you will also note that I only use this air pump and the air stone I only use the air pump instead of the submersible pump Maybe you will ask, Dexter, how would you maintain the water condition? Well, it's easy, actually. Even without using the submersible pump and even without using this uh, filter bucket. What I use are the plants right here. So in this corner, you will see that there are hornwort. You can use any plant like the hydrilla because hydrilla can also get the dirt and maintain the cleanliness of the water. But in my case, I use the hornwort. And these hornwort are tied up with this kind of nylon. And then I fix the location of this hornwort in one corner. It is not advisable to scatter the plants all over the tank. Because number one reason is that the goldfish will have a small place to swim on. It will actually congest the tank with the plants. So it's advisable to place them in one corner. And number two reason is that when you are grouping together your plants in one corner, they will serve as our filtration system. So all the dirt will go to the plants and it will become now the food of the plants. So you are now no longer disturbing the plants because they have food and the goldfish will have also a clear water. But the question is, is this enough? Is this enough to sustain the health of your fish? My answer is no, this is not enough. We cannot rely on these plants to maintain the good quality of the water because every day, I would like to emphasize, every day I am getting 25% of the water in each of this tank. Well, maybe you will say, Dexter, that's too laborious. Well, this is really the kind of attention that they needed. So allow me to give you the sample how we are gonna change the water. So guys, I have here a one meter hose, just very short. And I will use this one now to extract the water out from this tank. So the technique is we have to uh, fill this with water, okay? So the hose now uh, has been filled with water already. So the technique is you will cover both ends, okay? You will cover both ends and you will dip the other end of this to the tank and then release both ends together so it's easy to extract water I am now pointing the end of this to the dirt so that we can also get the dirt and we are reducing 25% of the water on a daily basis what about reducing 50% of the water it's not advisable it's really not advisable because they will not easily adapt a totally new water so this is our experience and the common question that our followers we're asking ever since we started vlogging about this fish is Dexter how to produce green water well we can produce green water if you are exposing your fish outdoor that's the normal occurrence that would happen 
if we gonna expose our fish outdoor and we will start feeding them so it will really change the color of the water but it is not bad for the fish green water is good for the fish as long as you are as what I have said maintaining the cleanliness of the water by frequently reducing 25% of the water and then putting another new water in the tank so this is on a daily basis and we are serious about this because we are breeding our fish well if your fish is not in good health it's very impossible to breed them because they can only be bred if they are on their A1 condition and the tips that we are sharing is to ensure that they will breed because they are on their A1 condition just yesterday I was able to breed the red cups and also the calico fish and I'm so glad that we already have produced plenty of the fingerlings of this goldfish and also the fingerlings of this Japanese koi so you will remember last time when we bred our Japanese koi I will let you see now the progress of their fry so these are the produce of our Japanese koi a few days ago we filmed the actual breeding of our Japanese koi and they are here now and we can already sell this one to the pet store and this is the cycle of our business we breed we grow and then we sell that's why I said this can be a good source of your income if you have problems about employment problems about putting up new business and you are an enthusiast of this tropical fish then you can start and this is my encouragement to you for 2021 you can have a good business out of this fish so you will see that they are here and imagine I am selling this at 25 pesos each at the pet store and if you can produce 1,000 pieces of this Japanese koi at 25 pesos that's a big money that's actually 25,000 pesos and if you can dispose that in a month that's a good money to earn this 25,000 pesos only for breeding your Japanese koi selling fingerlings of this koi are also lucrative because it's cheaper and very affordable for the customers and for those of you who are just new subscribers new to this channel and new members of this family I would like to make mention that we have two branches of this pet store at the town proper and this has been in existence this business actually it's been in existence for 20 years already I started this in the year 2000 and uh, this is actually still going on right now it's getting more support from the community and maybe because also of the videos of our channel so you will see that I have here this one you see this one the average size of this is 2 inches and this can be sold already at 20 to 25 pesos per fish I would like to emphasize that this is really a good business because the maintenance is just very low and uh, your income about breeding fish is even comparable to landing a good job in big corporations landing a good job in in the government service and it requires only a very small capital well it requires much of your attention much of your dedication but you will not need big amount of money to start up with this kind of business And one of you asked, Dexter, can we put all the breeders together? Well, we can do so. And one of you asked, Dexter, is it advisable to put all the breeder fish together, the male and the female? Well, my suggestion is to, to put the male goldfish separate from the female. So you will see that all the red cups that are here are female all the fish that are here are female and all male breeder goldfish are here they're all males they are certified male goldfish because they already have produced plenty of this uh, finger legs and the reason for this is to maintain the eagerness to chase and to breed because if they are just being placed together in one tank it will lessen their appetite to chase early in the morning or meaning to breed because they are chasing when they are breeding so this is my piece of advice and you may also try this one 
And our breeding of this fish had been so successful ever since we started expanding our territory. Actually, we have here a 300 square meters lot and we devoted this for our breeder fish. We have the breeder kois, we have the breeder goldfish, and even the beta and the guppies. And if you are interested to know about how to breed this kind of fish, we have so many videos about breeding beta, breeding this several types of fish. And I would like to make mention that it is important to secure your place from the predators. And when I say it's predators, maybe they will come in a form of the lizards, the birds, and even the robbers because it's my experience that when we gonna get videos out of our expensive fish two or three days after all those breeder fish gonna be robbed because the people can just easily come in and get our fish and these are too expensive that is why I made an effort to secure this area I made a temporary fence out of this uh, GI sheets we're hurrying this up because this area is really very vulnerable to some robbers and some intruders. These are the things that we have to consider. And you look at this one. We have some fingerlings of this Calico goldfish that are due for release at the mud pond. Anytime today we're gonna put this inside in the mud ponds that we have constructed and we will wait for at least two to three months before we're gonna get a good harvest and this will turn into a big jumbo goldfish that has good price in the market. So this is really a business. If you are going to just consider this seriously, this is a good business. So I hope guys you are encouraged and I hope that all the tips that we have told you will help you in your quest, in your dream to have this kind or this type of business. And please, if you are new to this channel, you haven't yet subscribed, I will invite you to please subscribe because we are uploading videos regularly. We're actually uploading videos every five days, only here at Dexter's World. There's a